I'm Pierre Prinstrup Andersen. Uh, I'm a professor in food, nutrition and public policy. As I understand the statistics, somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of all the deforestation that takes place takes place because people are trying to survive. They're cutting down trees uh, in order to use the land to produce uh, food and other agricultural commodities. So if we could increase productivity per unit of land, meaning farmers could produce more on the land that they have, the pressure on uh, the forest would be less. So the question really is, are we going to apply science to help farmers to produce more on the land that is suited for agriculture, or are we going to force them, at least implicitly force them into land that is not well suited for agriculture? Maybe we should begin with what's really important, namely that every minute that we sit here, 10 preschool children will die from hunger and malnutrition. To add that up on an annual basis, it's about six million preschool kids who die unnecessarily. They die because they don't have access to enough food. 800 million people altogether uh, do not know where the next meal is coming from. Uh, they are what we in, uh, in economics call food insecure. Uh, you can call them hungry if you like. 800 million people. A real disgrace to those of us who are not poor who could do something about it. And I remind you that 75 percent of the people we're talking about are in rural areas. If we want to help them to escape poverty, we've got to help them to produce more on the resources that they have. And that's why agricultural research is so extremely important. If we can develop drought-tolerant material that small farmers can plant in their environment, they can produce something the next time the drought comes around. When the drought comes, right now the farmer loses his or her crop and the child dies. Now, if you are the woman who are trying to feed her kids and the drought hits, she wants a solution to the problem. Whether it's genetically modified or otherwise is of less importance to her. She wants a solution. Remember that the 10 children that died last minute, they died. That's not reversible. So we have to compare the benefits with the risks. How would you feel if a delegation from Africa came to the United States and suggested that we should not use uh, genetic engineering in human medicine to solve our health problems. We probably wouldn't like that. Shouldn't we use the best science can offer to solve our problems? Of course we should. Shouldn't they use the best science can offer to solve their problems, meaning hunger, malnutrition? Of course they should, but we don't seem to all agree on that. <laughs>